Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of the Shallow Water Adventures with Keith and Jeffrey. I am Jeffrey, and we don't have Keith. <laughs> Keith is dead. I'm just kidding. Keith isn't dead. Keith is out of town. Um, so today I am on location, and we've got a brand new. I guess not brand new. We got a very special guest host today, the one, the only, the incomparable. Mr. Travis Madden, with us today from VPS. Welcome. How are Thank you, you so much for doing this. Um, sure. I'm good. I'm really good. Good. Um, what about you? Good. Good. Just trying to keep just, busy. Just good. Just. That's it. Filling in for Keith. <laughs> Try and fill in. Trying for Keith, to fill I guess. in for Keith. <laughs> Big shoes to fill. Well, you've got a little too much hair. Well. To really fill in for here Keith. Here or here. <laughs> uh, both. Both right. right now. I'll take it. Ke- Keith, if you're watching. <laughs> No, just kidding. Um, so a lot of you have been seeing, we've been posting um, a lot, all of Keith's pictures that he's been trying to make us all jealous with because yeah. he's a big butthole. Yep. Um, but we are doing a little, we're going to do a little giveaway next week. Um, everybody who has guessed the correct answer of where he's been, we're going to put that into a hat. So that'll be fun. Something to look forward to. Unfortunately, Keith will be back next week. So, so that's really good. But, um, so tell me, uh, BPS, what's been happening, what's new, what's going on in BPS land? Just getting that time of season, everything's starting to wind down, the seasons are starting to close, we closed here for Ducks in the North season, Yes, we Saturday did. was our last day, um, Southern Zone's got this Saturday's the last day, Right. so it's um, going to start winding down everywhere. How was your season? Uh, it was slower, about slower. like everybody else's. I mean, not, I not like it has been in years past, but as you've probably seen <sighs> posts and everywhere else, everybody's kind of struggled everybody with the warm weather. Stri- and, yes. Yeah, it's been, it's been a little in rough fact, for everybody. I was watching, somebody had posted on, um, it was like top 10 reasons why it was the worst duck season ever. <laughs> um, so I've seen a lot of that. It, it's been rough, but, you know, I, I mean, people still had some success. It wasn't sure. like a total bomb. Of Absolutely. Season. But, uh, good. So really good. So a little bit later, we're going to talk about um, you know, uh, kind of winding down the season with these motors um, and things to do that. We're going to do that in just a minute. But as usual, we are going to be taking your questions. Um, we're going to do that. Travis, of course, who always helps us out every week anyway, does have the answers, maybe even more answers than Keith. You know, that would be a really and good idea. Like, like stump, <laughs> stump the pros. That's what we need to do. I love that idea. I should have thought of that. Okay, so we're going to do that in a little while. I think that'll be fun. See, who, see if we can stump you and Keith. Who has... The better knowledge. I think that I think it's going to shape up to be a really. good He's been idea. around a lot longer than I have, <laughs> so. Well, he's been around forever. He is like he a has. Thousand. He's probably forgotten more than I'll ever know. <laughs> so <laughs> that might be an easy win for him. I know he hasn't beaten the duck calling or anything else. The yes. backing to the trailer, so maybe this is his chance to finally this win. Is, this might be his chance to finally win, <laughs> yeah, Keith. There you go. You could actually win a challenge, but you know Keith is getting a little older, and you know he's slowing down. I said, but he probably forgot more than I'll ever know. So. He's still probably in good shape. Well, I think that's going to happen. Awesome. Um, but before we get into that, I do want to talk about some other things. Since it's been a while since we've been here, um, we had a lot of questions. The last time we were here, we talked about duck calling. Mm-hmm. And I had this plan that I didn't pull off today, but I was going to... I was going to be like, oh, I've been practicing my duck calling so much, and then pull out my duck call and have like a recording go <laughs> behind. And it didn't work out, so my joke was totally ruined. But I have been practicing a little bit. That's good. Um, but we had a lot of people respond, and people are just were excited. So we need to do more with that next Absolutely. season, I think, is really, really awesome. But for all of you out there, if you do have questions on duck calling, now is the time. Grab sure. those, because Travis can answer some of those. Yep. Um, so that's really fun. I also want to talk a little bit about these right here. We've got we've got a, several of them. These uh, snow dogs right here. So tell us about those. Here, I'll even switch you positions so you can kind of show that. So we, we're a dealer for these. Um, in fact, we've been they've been flying out the door uh, the last couple of days here. Um, they're pretty much a versatile machine that can be used in the winter time and in the summertime. Uh, they're a tracked machine. Uh, they're a 13 and a half horsepower Briggs and Stratton motor that's in them. Wow. Uh, top speed, right around 20 miles an hour. Uh-huh. They will haul loads up to the. The material says 660 plus pounds. We've been using them for ice fishing, and I think you're probably closer to 700 to 1,000 with, you know, without the resistance, you know, that the ground's going to give as opposed to, to the ice. Um, so I mean, they'll haul a lot of weight. Right. You know, 30 miles or so to a gallon. There's just or to to a tank. 
So, so it's like it's like a snowmobile. It's like a stand-up snowmobile. Exactly. It's it's kind of like a yeah a lawnmower with with a snowmobile track is what it is. Right. So uh, we're like so we've been using them for ice fishing. They've been phenomenal. I mean, we've sold them for hauling kids up and down the, the tubing, the tubing and sledding hill. hills. Yes, that's exactly um, what I was thinking. Cross-country skiers have been using them. Some of the cities have purchased them for you know gr- uh, grooming the trails. They have attachments uh, that are single-track groomers. So the cities have been using them and purchasing them for to maintain those trails, fat tire bike trails. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I mean, you that. name it, there's all kinds of, of uses for the things. That's awesome. So They're really handy. So um, have you gotten out and done any ice fishing? I have. Fish? In fact, you I have was actually... Out trips already really? i was actually out last saturday and then two weeks before three weeks before there was an outdoor show here local that i went and did an outdoor show with right so um how did you do uh was we actually did pretty well yeah really? i did uh i fished saturday and a couple hours i ended up ice and seven myself personally oh, all right so okay bad. fine fine i guess no i was i was out earlier on in the season probably two two weeks ago or so gotcha. and got, got skunked gotcha Horrible. Gotta know where to fish, man. I you know, I know. Ah, don't, don't start with it. But these have got to be so useful. That's I, I am super jealous, and that's kind of on my next wish list right here is one of these snow dogs. So they just call you, basically. Yeah, they want just, one of these. Yep, just give us right a call here. at the shop, and we can help get the quotes done. And yeah, absolutely, that's awesome. Answer any questions they have for. It. Really cool. Those are awesome. I uh, I want one of those. Um, for everybody else out there, uh, while I am thinking about it, this is actually generally Keith's job, but like and share, everybody. If you like the show, please let us know. Leave any comments, um, any suggestions, but definitely like and share um, with us. So let me think. What else is uh, – I'm going to pull out the phone and start looking at those, but I want to talk about it's the end of the season. Yep. We're, we're pretty much done. One more weekend for most people. Um, so, so now what is the question? We've got these motors. We run them hard. What's our next step? Next step again depends on what you're using that motor for. Some of us put them away and won't see them until next duck season. Some of us use them for fishing in the off season. Uh, a lot of the guys in the south use them to run, you know, to redfish, alligator hunt out of uh, yeah. crawfish, that kind of stuff. Right. So some of them are put away. You know, here mine gets put away until. April to start bow fishing out of, and then I, like I said, regular fishing all the summer long. So mine only sits, you know, idle for a period of maybe two months. Right. So really not that long. Um, not that long. But but this time of year, especially when you're finished, everybody's broken stuff throughout the season. So the best time to fix that stuff is now. So you don't put it away and forget. Um, take some time and go through that motor. Uh, you know, take a set of wrenches and go through there. Make sure all the stuff, the nuts, the bolts are all tight because they do tend to have some vibration. And again, that's if they're not kept up, that's when you tend to get issues with mufflers cracking or props going unbalanced or, you know, crankcase right. cover coming loose, you know, and then it just creates further issues down the road. Uh, making sure that the drive is greased, make sure the belt tensions properly, change the oil if you want to change the oil now. Right. Um, Which is, yeah, air filters, absolutely. fuel filters, spark plugs, make sure the drive is greased. It's like I said, the belt tens- tension properly. Uh, make sure the valves are adjusted properly. So there's a lot of just basic off-season simple that you should be doing. You should be doing anyway, either anyway. before or after the season. Right. Twice a, twice a year is not going to hurt anything. It's probably a good good time to do it. Right. So what what have you seen? What's the most common problem that people are going to see at the season? Maybe they haven't fixed it up until now. They're just kind of like, oh, I'll wait, I'll wait and do it, or something that they need to be aware of. Kind of right now, but now is a good time to fix this little problem. Everything's put on hold, unfortunately, because it is duck season. Everybody wants to say, I've only got one week left. I need this stuff now. <laughs> That's exactly what uh, I was thinking. Which They're is like, awesome. As long as it will get me out there, I'm Correct. fine. And as long as it will run, like I said, just make sure that that stuff's done properly. Um, throttle cables, again, tend to be a big thing, which we do have a new throttle cable looper um, that we, we sell. Um, we have a lot of right. issues with things freezing, and we get we've seen the questions time and time and time again of my throttle cable keeps on freezing. How do I keep it from freezing? Right. I broke it; it won't thaw out. Yes, um, we have a new throttle cable looper. Um, it slides right down inside here. Maybe maybe I've tightened it down too far. I think I probably did. Screwed on so tight. <laughs> where's Keith when you need yeah, him? Where's, where's, where's the muscles when we <laughs> we've got him? <laughs> Well, anyway. All right. Well, in, in the meantime, I do have some shout-outs. Um, we also have this motor. Look, this this uh, motor looks like it has been 
through the uh, through the ringer. That is a customer's motor. Speaking of keeping yeah, things I'll switch, I'll switch up, up to date and uh, maintenance, this is probably in need of a good a good fix. Yeah, a good little fix, Go good little clean. Correct. Yeah. Yep. But now's the time. Now is the time because you're going to put it away. Yeah. And in Correct. a year. Yes. Or so you're going to pull it out and be months, like, or six months, months whenever, exactly. and not not be able to run it. Yep. Excellent. And again, with that, if, if they're going to stay, put it that way along, make sure with the fuel, make sure that they're disconnecting the fuel lines to the carburetors, make sure they're running them dry, make sure they're putting fuel stabilizer in there. Right. Again, that's all going to help. And that's with the carbureted model. If you've got that EFI model, you don't want to run it dry. Correct. That's correct. That is something that I, I learned this year with uh, Keith. See, I listen to Keith. <laughs> um, he does know a thing. He too. knows something, whatever. Um, Bryce Evans is on. Hey, Bryce. Thank hey, you Bryce. Uh, for watching. He's got a question. How much does a snow dog weigh, roughly? Uh, the standard model that you're looking at there, you're right about 320 pounds. Right. Pretty light. Really easy. Right out, You use the snowmobile tracks right up in the back of your truck. Yep. For the ramp right in the back of the truck. It's really not the the weight is distributed on those things a lot eat better than it is you know an average guy you know if you get an average guy that's 250 260 pounds that weight is distributed a lot better in here than it is just standing in right. general All right absolutely sure all right uh, Brandon Seely I need help what do I use to service lower unit on a Sport V uh, gear oil yeah just yes yeah. oil yep. okay perfect um, Keith. Just said getting on the plane now. He told me that three hours ago. I was just gonna say he also <laughs> told me that three hours ago. What do you mean you're getting on the plane now? Maybe he's got a connecting flight. I, I don't he know. must. He said he was in Denver earlier. Okay. Oh, he's in Denver. That's what he's doing. He's probably trying to catch a connected flight then. Denver, picking up some stuff. Mm -hmm. Layover. Yep. Just kidding. <laughs> he wouldn't. That was inappropriate. I'm so sorry. Um, oh, we've got Cheryl and Rod Thompson. Hi, guys. Hey. Hey, guys. How's it going? Um, Chris Stokes is on. He asks, do the BPSQ come with the gaskets? Yes, they do. They will come with the thick gaskets, yes. Awesome. And Chris, for that, I have for you, um, I've got, which one is this? This. Strap. Oh, this is the duck strap. Uh, Chris Stokes, there is a link. Everybody, I remember to put the link at the top of the description. Good job. <laughs> Crazy awesome. I'm learning. I get better every week. Just kidding. I don't. Um, click that. Uh, Chris Stokes. This is for you. Click that link and fill out that info. We'll get that sent off to you. Oh, I'm going to grab that down there so I don't give it away to somebody else. Oh, I've, I've got Ryan Blount on. Ryan Blount is here. Um, Ryan won our... Um, he, he won the 25th anniversary giveaway. Gotcha. He won the boat and motor. Very cool. Um, he's, he's my new favorite. He, he's got some maintenance to do. He, he will. Um, he's actually going to come pick up the boat in March, so I could not be more excited. Cool. Um, I've got Jackson Hill on. Just get the torch. It'll come on. Oh, he, with that. Oh, seriously, he's, just get the torch. Yeah, it'll just burn it off. Just yeah. burn it off. It'll be fine. I'm not Enrique. <laughs> I was going to say, that's, Enrique must be helping him. Yeah. They're friends, I guess. Um, Luke Powell, uh, let's see. It was a tough year hunting in central Illinois, hoping for a better snow goose season. Fingers double crossed. You do, you, you geese hunt. You hunt, the, you hunt the geese. I have, yep, I do. Yes. And you, you call geese. Yes, I do. Yep. You have your goose call around? I don't have it. You don't have it. it. Whatever. <laughs> It wasn't the truck. In fact, I actually, the last trip, I took it from the truck and put it on the lanyard. So it hasn't gone off the so lanyard has, back to my pickup truck yet. Right. So um, I when guess did, I when do you, you should do that. When do you start? When, when's goose season here? You think I would it's, know that? It's running now. Run we are time. now. It runs. We've got a couple more weeks for A couple more for weeks. For Correct. Yeah. Okay. What do you prefer? There's there's a question for you. You'd rather do ducks or you'd rather do goose? Geese. Goose. Geese. Um, um, depends. Water, I like shooting ducks. If it's a field, I would probably rather... I like shooting geese in the field, don't get me wrong, but okay. shooting mallards in a field is pretty hard to beat, too. So, I, I don't know. I, it's tough, man. I, both. That's no why matter, I do No it. matter what you say, somebody's going to disagree I know, you, so. and I don't think they're wrong either way, because <laughs> I would go for either. So Got it. But, yes, tough year in uh, central Illinois. So, sorry, Luke, but uh, you're not alone. That's, no. that's a good thing. You're not, not alone in that. Uh, I've got Mark Harrell on. Hey, Mark, what's going on? Uh, Can you question, Mark Harrell? That's a good one for Travis. Oh, uh, that must be further on down the line. Who's up kind of high? Uh, let me scroll. 
down to it. I don't. Oh. It just says I have not been told. I have been told to not call for redheads and blue bills, but I've noticed that I can get their attention with a mallard um, call and then switch it up to. Uh, sorry, there's like a line right in the middle of my <laughs> with my camera thing. I can't read it. Um, so pretty much, he's just saying with a couple different mallard calls, he can get them to come closer. Have you ever heard of that working? It, you can, um, Mark, and that's a great question. Divers and puddle ducks are, are two different animals there, if you will. Um, the, <laughs> two different ducks. Correct. <laughs> a lot of times, if you can even take your mallard call, and they do actually sell diver calls. I, I don't hmm. tend to, to hunt divers a whole lot, so I don't own one. But you can actually even take your, your mallard call and even just a basic almost roll of the tongue. Just kind of, if you will, that's kind of... The noise that they make, if you will, and, and that's pretty close to, I mean, just, and that's pretty much a, a diver like this. call, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and so it does work, Mark. It, it does work. So I told you I've been practicing. But I'm not a diver guy, time. so. <laughs> um, good. Thank you, Mark. That's a, that's a great question. appreciate it. And Mark, can, you, since he's on there, like so speaking of birds, Mark, yes. we've got this bag. We've got a bird bag here bird that bag. Uh, that we stock. So why don't we just go ahead and give him this bird bag for them uh, divers that he's been flying? Perfect, Mark Harrow, so. for your divers. Uh, click the link up above, bird bag. and we'll get that bird bag out to you. Um, and Mark, also remember, you don't have to be nice to Keith. <laughs> just saying. Um, okay. Did get, I'm sorry, I just got to read through and make sure I understand it. Okay, so from John Benninger. I sent a message the other day about a new exhaust system for my Black Death 45. I need to know what system would give me some extra horsepower. He did get back to me, but my phone crashed and I just couldn't find his reply. So, so he's looking for a little extra horsepower uh, for his Black Death. Okay, so we've got two options for that. We've got the Rapid Muffler or we have the Q Muffler. Um, both of them are going to give you performance. They're both performance mufflers. Um, you're probably a little bit more horsepower gain with that rapid. Uh, you, more noise yeah. comes with that. More noise. And the Q, like I said, you're, you're probably two horsepower increase with that, a little bit quieter. And that's quieter than the rapid, but just fairly comparable to the stock, but maybe just a little louder than that. So either option is a great option if you're looking to stay quiet. The Q muffler is a great option. If, if you're not concerned about the noise, then that rapid muffler is probably the best for you sure. uh, as far as increasing horsepower. Very nice. Do you know what I also find to be a really great way to increase your horsepower? Buy a brand new motor. That works too. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, you could always get that 5,000. That's right. John, I'm just telling you. But John, I do appreciate the question. I have got Mallard Madness for you, my friend. John Benninger, that one's for you. Click the link above. Fill out that, uh, that info. We'll get that sent off to you. Appreciate it. Um, Bryce Evans, um, he asked about the weight of the, uh, the snow dog. That's light, he says. Might have to call it a mud dog and send one to South Georgia. <laughs> Absolutely. But you were saying it's not just for winter. You can use it in the summer. You can Absolutely. use it on the trail. Absolutely. And there's a lot of accessories, too. They, they do make trailers uh, that looks like a chariot that's got some wheels on it. They have one that's got you know, a little compartment behind the wheels uh -huh. that you can haul logs or stuff around the yard or you know right. back and forth from your cabin or that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, exactly. So, absolutely. Really, really uh, versatile. Yes. I like it. Um, Keith Mitchell just said about time. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I don't, I mean, he never makes any sense. Yeah. Um, Brandon Seeley, best muffler and attachments to get for my Sport V and will the Rapid Muffler work? Rapid muffler will not work on that Sport V, so the best okay. option is to be that vertical Q muffler. The vertical Q muffler yep. for your performance on the Sport V. Yes. I really like those Sport Vs. They're nice. I, uh, we're looking at, at um, adding one to the Salty, actually, for fishing season. Gotcha. Because it's more outboard style. Correct. A little, little more maneuverability there. Cool. So we're excited for that. Um, let's see. Where was I? Oh, we've, got, we've got some here. Oh, well, I, there's a lot here. Sorry. Okay, I've got Jeremy Crow on. He says, hello, Travis. Do you know, you know Jeremy? I do know Jeremy. Okay. Yep. All right, very good. Local duck call builder. Actually. Oh, okay. So, Hey, Jeremy. Come on over call? sometime. Yeah, yeah, right there. Right, ex jingle. Excellent. I like it. Um, okay, Grayson, Vincent, what does the Black Death 5000 mods list consist of? Exhaust tuner heads, etc. 
So the 5,000, I don't believe, comes in a black death. That's the uh, carbureted model. Correct. Is that, is if, that correct? Is, 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 are you talking about the EFI or the or the carbureted? Yes. Because it just depends on what's going on. That 5,000... Grace, I'm going to need a little more info, and we're going to get yeah. to that. We're going to answer that question sure. a little bit. Yeah, we can answer it better um, because there's that. You might be thinking of the uh, anniversary edition, which comes with the uh, the momentary bump switch, and Correct. it's got the uh, yeah. uh, the new wiring, the bigger handle. The... Send us a message and email. Like yeah, exactly, get exactly. And I'll get I'll get that cleared up, or okay. I'll make uh, Keith, Keith do, do that <laughs> later when he actually comes back to work. Um, Brandon Seeley, I'd like a BPS sticker. No. No, Brandon. He's asking a lot, man. You are asking too much, <laughs> Brandon Seeley. Just kidding. We'll see. Brandon, we, quit we asking for stuff. I got your sticker, pal. <laughs> Quentin Helms, love the Raptor exhaust. Adds a lot of horsepower to my 35 horse mud motor. Awesome. Thank yep. you, Quentin. I appreciate that. In fact, Quentin, for you, just for that, I got a, I got a tangle free hat right here for you. That's the Optifade Timber. Um, so, Quentin, click the, uh, click the link at the top. We'll get that sent off to you. Um, all right, I've got Jackson Hill on. Excited to see you guys. Strawberry videos. Do we know? Do we have? Do we know uh, well, what's I, going on? I was there last Saturday, and let me tell you, the snow is ridiculous. Is it? There's probably like the, the report had like yeah, almost a foot four of slush. inches of slush yeah. and about eighteen inches of snow on top of the ice. So <laughs> I did fish it. Like I said, I did fish it last Saturday and actually did pretty and decent. And you did okay. So I, I'm sure we can get out. There. We might not want to be able to get where we can think we can get but we can i'm sure we can get out on the ice and probably do a video i shortly. know we've got it so. well i want to get out there bad so okay. we'll, well, we'll we'll get something plan. going we'll do another so, video and sure. you know it's going to be hilarious anyway. absolutely we'll get corbin out there and let everybody yep. enjoy his his wide use of of the english language <laughs> yeah we can do that for sure <laughs> always a good time uh um, Enrique is into some torching. He's 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 up for a little bit of that. He's obviously not working. He's obviously not working. <laughs> um, let's see. Jeremy McKay, settle the argument: rolling feed chatter or slow chattel chatter while working ducks? Uh, depends on the situation. But if you had to pick one, I would say the slower rather the than a rolling fast feed. So okay. like I guess that's situational. But I I don't know. All right, Personal so preference. Jeremy, did you hear that? So he's going with the uh, the slow chatter Slower. to to break that oh, argument. Yeah. I want to hear um, Jeremy. I want to know what this uh, who your who your sure. argument is with. I, I, I want to hear that. I love arguments. You know, any kind hey. of competition, I'm Ooh. in. Sure. <laughs> um, Jared Heppelinger, no hunting this year in Eastern Europe. F oh, fighting for freedom, Jared. You're the man. You are the man. Everybody, post you're the man right here for, uh, for Jared. Appreciate it. Um, Matt Cowell's on. Matt, I'm sure you have something better to do, my friend. Matt, come on. Just kidding. What's up, Matt? It's good to see you. Um, Andrew Curtis, what would be the best upgrade for a 40 EFI? For that 40 EFI, that, I mean, we, have that, we have the beast package that we sell. That Which I is, love. Is, that's it's that's the one. It is, is that it's, beast it's, package. It's awesome. Hands down. So. They say um, what's in that? Shop. Yes, call the call shop. The shop or, like I said, it's on the website as well. On the website as well, but you want to kind of tell them a little bit what's in, what comes included. You it's, the got, it's got the tuners and it's got uh -huh. the cam, um, the push rods, the roller rockers. I mean, it's, it's yeah. legit. Yeah, it's a legit package for sure. Yeah, that's going to, that's going to, that will, that will do you. What oh. is the PS number here? It's 385-695-3807 is the shop like. You see, Keith, that's how somebody says a phone number. <laughs> Keith always has to say it like with a question, like six, seven. Well, I did have to think because do you give your direct line or do you give the main shop line? <laughs> right. So that's where he gets confused. He always starts with trying to figure out which one he's going to give. Uh, one day he's going to end up giving you his wife's phone number. <laughs> Probably, or his own personal cell phone Or his own phone personal number. cell phone. Yep. He's never done anything like that before. Or we could save him the hassle. We could give it to everybody. Great idea. And then he wouldn't have to remember. <laughs> Okay, uh, I got Luke Powell on. What's going on, Luke? You guys should give it a try. E collar, no plugs and no limits. It's a blast. Yeah. I'm not sure what your conservation snow goose season. Is that what he's talking e about? E collars, no plugs, no okay. limits. Yep, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, pretty awesome. Yep. Okay. Good. Keith just wrote bye bye, boys. I don't. I just can't. <laughs> who let him on the plane again? Him on here. He's he's done with Denver. <laughs> he's got his package and he's he's out out. 
Um, Rick Hillicoss. Um, Rick is the one. He uh, he's always like watching from his blind. Gotcha. He's out like lucky guy. He, yeah, hunted something. I don't know. Rick, are you are you out there right now? I don't know if you are. What kind of water draft do you get in your 18 foot XL with a 44 horsepower surface drive? That's a that's a tough one. What kind of water that, draft? That might be a Dave question. Yes. So how much draft? I mean, there's not much in them. No, there really isn't that so. much. But um, with your 40 EFI, you've got an 18 foot boat. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't dare tell you plane. on that. Yeah. yeah. So is what I want you to do, Rick. If I don't get back to you, um, send an email to Dave at XLBoats.net. Um, he's our, he's our expert, and he will be able to answer that for you. Um, but I'm, but yes. That, that XL, I'm sure that's an F4. While we're talking about boats, though, I, I, gotta, I gotta show everybody. I don't know if you can all see what's behind, but this is Blade. You've, you've probably seen this out a few times. We kind of love to stand in front of this boat. This is a Blade's, Blade's personal F4 right here. This boat is the best. Set up. And my favorite, my favorite thing about this is, uh, this is what we go um, bow fishing in yep. when we go. And it's got these two platforms, one on the front and one at the back. And the, the best thing that I love about them is that they're removable. That they're, they're um, what is it, it's a, it's a winch strap. Correct, it's a turnbuckle or a tie down strap. Right, so if you wanted to uh, pull those off, it, it, it would be almost no trouble. No, no trouble at all. You can pull them off in a matter of five or 10 minutes. Right. Yep, absolutely. So awesome, and if you've never been bow fishing before, you got to give it a try. It is honestly my favorite thing in the whole it world. Is fun. And it makes it so much better when you've got these sweet platforms Correct. on it. Give you the height, stand right over those fish and yep. just nail them. Really, really awesome. Um, <laughs> Gwen Helms, I totally repped that BPS shirt. <laughs> They're rare. Sorry, you can't have one. They're too rare. They're like gold. Just kidding. Um, Gary Harrington, them bags are awesome. Uh, Matt Cow doing a stage two build on my 35 Mud Buddy, uh, getting a Raptor prop worked. What's going to be my best two blade? Is it the hammer? Depending on the, the RPMs he's running, I, I would think he's probably gonna be close to running that hammer prop. Okay. So it would depend on what RPMs he's running. Got it. So Matt, there is that. And if not, if not that hammer, then it's gonna be that big blade for him. Correct. Yeah. Very nice. Ben Hopman, um, he loves his shaggy. Cool. Yeah. It's a great blind. We ben. sell a lot of them. That's, yeah, it is a great blind. Really great. Oh, we got Alicia watching. Alicia, yeah, come back to me, Alicia. Come back. Come back. That's all I have to say to Alicia. She's our, uh, friend. our friend. Front desk Worker. receptionist. Front desk. She's, yeah. She keeps us all in line. Brandon Smith, I didn't see the leak from... Oh, okay. <laughs> You forget it. <laughs> I always do. I always forget it. But Brandon, he says, I didn't see the link from last week's show with Keith being cheated out of his victory. <laughs> well, Brandon, let me tell you. Um, no, you're right. I didn't put that up. Uh, but those should be coming out to you anyway. We've, we've got a lot of that. And I will post that link. In fact, the link above that's there, you can click that anyway. It's, it's a link. We'll get that to you, Brandon. Um, and I apologize. Or I was going to apologize until you said that about... Keith getting cheated, and now I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm indifferent now to your plight. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Whew. When a new one comes in, it pops to the bottom. So I gotta scroll, <laughs> scroll all the way, all back, way back through. Up. Okay, here we go. Uh, would you recommend changing how frequency you call for late season ducks? That's from Mark Staub. You can, um, again, kind of situational. The later in the season, they can tend to be a little call shy. Um, the last trip that I personally made, um, I, was, I was goose hunting. Um, we tried calling like we did normally, and I thought maybe it was a little bit too much. Okay. So we had everybody else. I said, okay, there was two other gentlemen that were with me that were calling. I said, okay, let's just, just be quiet for a minute, let me try. And we just ran one call, and it seemed to work a lot better. So again, just a single person, me calling, just simple clucks, mows, nothing crazy, just Sure, just a little talking back and forth, and yeah. that was as simple as you kept, it, and it seemed to work a lot better. So yes, the tactics do change late season to early season. Absolutely, fantastic. Mark, stop. That that was a great question. I have a lucky duck tumbler 
for you, my friend. Uh, great question. Mark, click the uh, top, the link at the top, and we'll get that sent off to you. Who was it, Mark? Lopper? That is Mark Staub, S-T-O-B. Andy Johnson is on. Hey, Andy. So much more informative when Keith is on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I agree. I absolutely agree. See, I honestly think, yeah, I want to see this competition. I, I think you might could take him. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for that now. Um, Andy, for that, actually, in fact, I just love that so much. I've got a, I've got a Camo Systems uh, trucker hat here for you, Andy Johnson. Yeah, click the boat doctor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that. Yes. Mr. Boat Doctor, that is for you because anybody who says mean things about me. <laughs> um, ben Bowler, do you have anything performance wise for uh, the 26 Kohler? The 26, we do not. We do have some performance parts for the 25 and 27 Kohlers. Uh, we've got a cam and heads for those and uh, ex exhaust. But okay. as far as a 26, I double check it. I never heard of a 26. Well, it's that 26 well, and a half. 26 I think and a we, half. we call it the 25, I believe, when you buy it. So it might be that okay. 25 so that he's actually. it's probably comparable then. Okay. I th the 26 I think so. and a half is, is yes. probably what he's referring to. Okay. Yes, it is the 26 and a half. Gotcha. But we don't, but nothing. <laughs> you know what? I'm not 100% sure if the, 20, the, the kits we have will fit that 26 and a half or not. Got it. So, Ben, is what I want you to do is contact Keith. And he, between, uh, between the two of you, you Absolutely, or shoot me an email and we can, we can dig into it. We can dig into it's that. Travis Absolutely. at backwaterperformance.com. Perfect. Uh, Nicholas Sellers. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. Um, this is from Nicholas. Hey, Nicholas, good to see you again. Um, since Travis is on here, I will go ahead and ask the question again. What are the benefits to buying a more expensive acrylic duck call versus a less expensive wood call? The acrylic is going to be a lot louder. Uh, the volume is going to be there. It's going to be a sharper sound. Uh, the wood is a more natural sounding to me personally. And again, personal preference. And again, the day that you're hunting, if it's windy, if it's rainy, I like to run an acrylic call because it's a lot louder. They can hear it a lot farther out there. The quieter days, I tend to run a wood call myself because I like that quieter. They don't need to be yelled at. They're right there. They can hear that call plenty good. As they come in a little bit closer, it can be soft. So I like the wood. In fact, I run wood calls probably about 85 or 90% of the time. I personally like the way the wood sounds a lot better than the acrylic. But I do have options to do, like I said, if it is windy, I do have an acrylic call I can right. get louder on. Or if it's quieter and I need to. And sometimes I'll even switch. Sometimes I'll use that acrylic call to get the attention as they start working their way closer. I'll, I'll switch it out and run to a wood call. So, again, situational, but both are great, great options to have. Um, awesome. Brandon Smith, that boat behind you needs a joystick-driven mud buddy <laughs> kicker. All right, I will, yeah. I, I agree. I, sure, sure, I will tell, uh, I will tell Glade yeah. tomorrow. I will let him know. Um, Tony Lucero, can you please make a seven horsepower hyper? <laughs> <laughs> it would be an interesting, would be. interesting challenge there. Um, Michael Walker, what kind of motor would you guys recommend for a 14-foot flat-bottom fiberglass kingfisher? Oh, let's see, a 14-foot... That mini. I would either say that mini or that long, long tail. tail. Yeah. In fact, probably the long tail is what I would say first. Uh, how wide the boat is um, and what kind of a load you're going to pull with that. And I don't, I'm not familiar with that model boat either. I don't know if it's a, if it's a flat bottom, if it's a V, I, I don't it's, know. Well, it is a flat bottom. Okay. Um, but you know, um, Michael Walker, that is a great question, and I am going to look a little more into that as well. Um, but I, pro I probably would say that uh, that long tail motor is going to be a really great yep. uh, motor for that boat. But I do have for you, um, this is for Michael Walker, this is our... Uh, this is our sweet new Sitka trucker hat right here. Click the link at the top and I'll get that sent off to you. It's the hat I'm wearing right now. I love this hat. I don't wear hats very often, but this one I actually enjoy. So that tells you something. Um, Garrett Kirchhoff, you're the man, Jared. I'm gonna go with a Jeff on this, that he means me. Well, I know Garrett, so I think he's talking about me. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> He better I be mean, talking about I me. Mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who this Jared is that he speaks of. I don't but, either. Um, I'm sure you've been called worse. 
so. I don't know if that's an autocorrect. I'm not sure. But Garrett, <laughs> if you're looking for some kind of prize, Jared's not going to cut it for you. <laughs> um, Matt Cowell, uh, he's on my... Matt, he's on his 15-minute break. I knew it. I knew go. he had better things to be doing. Mason Hudson, carb kit. Do you have to run exhaust also? No. No. You don't have to. You can just do the carb kit. Absolutely. Good question. Good question, Mason Hudson. Good question. That's all I'm going to say. You thought I was going to give you something. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I think you just said it again, too. Um, Matt Cow, my dog ate my timber mud buddy hat that he won. Oh, too Keep stuff bad. away from the dogs, man. I, it's, it's like a power trip sometimes standing up here is everybody's just like, pick me, pick me. You know, some days. Some well, I've got days. a new puppy, and so I know what it's like about stuff being chewed. So if it gets chewed up, I can't blame the dog. i got to blame myself for not keeping it out of the dog's reach, right? Exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. Okay, now something is going on here because I've got... Oh, 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 oh. I know what they're talking about. Jared is the man. He was, uh, Jared was um, our service member. That I was like, everybody say that Jared is the man. That's who they're gotcha. talking about. I right. get it now. I'm sorry. There I have a go. very short memory. Everybody started to say that now. That's how far behind I am in these comments. That's how fast they're coming. That's good. So, yes, everybody, he is the man. Thank you, everybody. Jared is the man. You're right. Um, let's see. Mason Hudson, can you run a car kit without the aftermarket exhaust? We answered that one. Anybody buddy, I agree. Slow chatter. Okay, Jeremy, we got that. We got that. Oh. 26 and a half again. I have that same question from Matt Atez. Y'all have anything performance wise for that 26 and a half? So, that question, um, we're going to dig into that a little more. Send an email to Travis. It's Travis at, at backwaterperformance.com. Backwater um, and we're going to dig into this, what we have for that. Um, Sean Bowdry, Wisconsin, checking in. What up, Wisconsin? Uh, Jackson Hill of the guys at BPS. They have me a ton this summer with some older motor mount issues on a 13 horse. That's awesome. Cool. Jackson, uh, he's great. Uh, Johnny Briggs, Texas watching. What up, Texas? Um, Garrett Kirchhoff and the boat is for sale. Yeah, Garrett. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. Luke Powell, bow fishing would be a blast with that boat. It really is. I'm There's telling you, time. if you've never been bow fishing or don't have a platform, I, I think you should definitely look into it. My, okay. S who do you think this is? So somebody on the Mud Buddy account just wrote bow fishing. It's duck season, Jeff. I know. Who, I, don't know who I don't know. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know who it is. But it's never too soon to be talking about bow fishing. No. Never. Nope. So I don't know who that is out there. But and then uh, when we're bow fishing, we'll be talking about duck season. We'll be talking so about what duck season. Matter, right? Exactly. What's What's the season amongst? It's a never-ending cycle. It's a never-ending cycle. Absolutely. Um, but no, we don't want to discount any of the duck hunters. No, we still do no. have, whoa, you've got four more days, yeah. some people. Southern zone here. The yeah, Southern it's closed zone. up north where we're at now. We're, yeah, we're done. It's, so. it's done here. So we are done. So there's... Yeah, I mean, I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, Stephen Gray, hey guys. Um, Rick Hillicost, what is your favorite duck call? Uh, you know what, I run several different ones. I, I do have my favorite ones, honestly. I run an, an Echo Timber that I really, uh -huh. really like, yes. um, and I have a Cadence duck call built in Texas. Charles Smith builds those, and I really like those as well. So uh -huh. I, I run a Cadence and those echo, Echoes uh, both. I, I just really have a right. soft spot in my heart for soft both of those. Absolutely. Yes, I get it. No, that's, that's awesome. So we've got a, a first. We've got a show first. Just kidding. It's not really a first. But J. Paul Jackson is actually watching right now, everybody. J. Paul is on. <laughs> Send a comment. It's the first time it's ever happened, everybody. It was oh, was that him? <laughs> so it was Jake Paul. Got it. He also says, if I ask a good question, can I get a lucky duck tumbler too? <laughs> Jake Paul, no. You can't. Not when it's your first time on. No way. Um, Justin and Ackerling is trying to be nice to Jake Paul. He says yes, but <laughs> Justin doesn't know anything. Chris Sager, for field hunting, do you prefer layouts or a frame blind? Do you think a frame spook birds? Again, situational. Uh, the the willow blinds, the A-frames, they were used years and years and years ago. Then we progressed into the layout blind, and then that was the deal to, to layout hunt. And when you when you field hunted, <laughs> was you use layouts. Yeah, it's it, waterfowl hunting. Go seems to be going in cycles. You are seeing a lot of the more the A-frame styles, the the old style willow blinds come back now. 
uh, because we beat them up in layout blinds for so long. They've got used to those, and now the you know the A frames and that kind of stuff is coming back around. They're making a, a push back again. You've seen a lot of panel blinds that are being put out and produced again now. So it's it's coming around. So right. kind of, again, situational depends on your hide that you've got in your field. But uh, yeah, there's definitely not wrong with either either one. Nice, uh, Corey Meacham. The motor that is by that behind you, I'm guessing, is not a mud motor. And you're right. I think he's looking at that giant Yamaha yeah. back there. And you're right. That. Uh, he's got a, he's got that big Yamaha attached to this to this yep. boat. Uh, okay, let's see. How much different is polycarbonate than wood in a call? Um, it's definitely going to be cheaper. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit softer, probably more subtle. Um, the polycarbs, like I said, they're just a molded molded plastic, is what they are. Uh, some of them are good, some of them not. If you're looking for a polycarb call that is probably the best polycarb call for the money that echo trash talker that we've talked about before yeah, oh yeah that's the jeffrey the jeffrey that, right that, here it's the jeffrey it is tough to beat it's a great yes. polycarb it is call. such a great call. absolutely and someday i'm gonna be really good at it absolutely next season that's my goal my new year's resolution be a better duck caller there you go there it is right there um Stephen gray he writes where did travis model prior to working at bbs <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness nowhere, because you can see how far that took me. That's why I'm here, because well, I, your I don't have a career, career in didn't modeling. Work out, you and did not. so you had to go to BPS. <laughs> oh, and that's only occasionally. Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, Stephen, I've got a uh, I've got a camo system shirt for you, Stephen Gray. Um, fill out the uh, form above, click that link, and I'm gonna get that sent off to you. Uh, Beck, and I can actually probably take that to him. I will see him tomorrow night because I have been William. helping him with his duck calling. So, <laughs> good. All right. We'll do, yeah, I will just give that to you. Yes, if you can <laughs> throw that at him or strangle him with it. Probably both. Um, hello from North Central Illinois. That's Luke Blanco. How's it going? Hey, Luke. Oh, yeah. Yes, Gary. He's correcting me with the Jared comment. Yes, they're all getting that. I'm so behind. And here we thought they were trying to talk I about know, both of us. I know, I know. How bad do you feel I feel now? like an idiot. I'm just like, I'm not oh, Jared. Man. How dare you? Yeah. Sorry, I am. It's just slow. We're so behind. I'm sorry. I'm going to skip ahead because I've got change screen names. Okay. Yes. Here we go. We've got all the expl explanations. It's coming. Here we go. Okay. Oh, let's see. Going to be great. Um, hey guys, love my bud, buddy. Keep up the good work. That's from Willie Will. Awesome. Um, I really appreciate it. J. Paul, Jeff, to quote Taylor Swift, something I can't believe I'm doing. <laughs> Why you got to be so mean? <laughs> awesome. All right. Enough. Enough of this. I can't do any more. Thank you, everybody, so much for uh, joining us for this episode of the Shallow Water Adventures. I want to thank all of our amazing sponsors who have helped us out um, with all season long. Echo Calls, Tangle Free, X, uh, XL Boats, Lucky Duck, uh, Deep Apparel, BPS, uh, Camo Systems, and... Uh, 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 deep, deep dryer. Uh, deep apparel. <laughs> no, no, I already said that one. It's the foot dryer. Um, I can oh, all. Pete dryer. Yeah, peat dryer. That's what it. Peat. I'm like, I'm thinking deep. Peat dryer, um, as well, has helped us out. Um, but thank you, everybody. Uh, go check out these sponsors. They're such a big deal. Also, if you like the show, please uh, give us a like, um, follow us, and uh, share. We love Absolutely. it when you share. Um, and uh, we really appreciate you doing that. Travis, thank you so much for letting me come over Thanks and talk to you guys and uh, it. fun. answering all these idiots' questions. And you can have Keith back next week. <laughs> I guess I'll have to go back to Keith <laughs> next time. Sorry. <laughs> I know. You know, small favors, I guess. Um, so, next week we are going to be on. Uh, we've got some fun. We're doing uh, the runoff for the competition. There, there was controversy That's about right. who won the, the big competition with the prop. We're doing that next week, so we're going to have a definitive winner next week. That's going to be at 3 o'clock Mountain Standard Time next Wednesday. Until then, we will see you right here in the shallow water.